Wills came through. And cross for Koppel to head it down. It's Koppel again. Onto the near post. Only back as far as Phil Neal with the shot. Phil Neal prepared to shoot on sight. And it was a good effort. Ball played down the England right. Koppel looking for McDermott initially on the near post, but Phil Neal taking it first time on his left foot. Good effort. <laughs> Alvin Martin up with the goalkeeper. This is Trevor Brooking. Oh, there's a chance there to go. Here's Brooking. It's Martos with the tackle. And Keegan. Good effort, beaten out by Mesherosh. Couples in there. And putting Shala under pressure. Keegan. And Keegan wide to Koppel. And a header by Garaba. Kneeling quickly. There's Keegan in there again with uh, Valent. And it's come free. And the drive was by Robson. A lively start to the second half by England, and Keegan again was the man who was giving the Hungarians all sorts of bother. Valent, the number three, went up with him, and his header was a poor one. It came out to Robson, and his shot was just wide. There's, there's Bela Katsiets, who played in Budapest uh, in the 3-1 game. Anyway, England are on the ball with Steve Cockle. Brooking. Rush was hurt this time without a doubt. Steve Koppel on the right wing, getting in a good cross. Trevor Brooking at the near post, flicks it on. Keegan goes up with the goalkeeper, gives him a shove, and this time Mesherosh does need attention. He insists he's all right. He's waved that official back behind the goal. Keegan a little flick to McDermott. They've got five players in attack. Phil Neal is coming up from right back as well. Brooking. Still Brooking. And still Brooking. And he was shoved. Not given. The defender, I think it may have been Garaba, seemed to knock him off balance. But the French referee had a look and said no. Wonderful piece of skill by Trevor Brooking inside the Hungarian penalty area. Twisting, turning, and finally Garaba shoved him. Brooking with the corner. Oh, and Martin came in, and so did Keegan. Keegan back. Oh, it's just wide by Mariner. Well, Brooking took the corner, and watch Alvin Martin come in here, and the ball goes beyond him. Kevin Keegan beats Mesherosh, flicks it back in. Mariner's flick just misses the post. Morley. McDermott on the far side with a volley of which he's always capable one of the best volleyers of a ball you'll see Terry McDermott doesn't matter what height it comes to him wraps his right foot round it and a very very fine try in the next few minutes Brooking Neil always oh, a chance there for McDermott and he drove it right across the goal and knows that by his standards, it was an acceptable chance. Six minutes to go, and this could have finished it off. McDermott got the rebound off Valent, and Keegan tried to stick his foot out to turn it in. Robson. Onside, Trevor Brooking. Tries to pick out Keegan. This is Morley. And Mesherosh 
who is happier stopping shots than he is taking crosses, denies Tony Morley. The header out by Balint, straight to Morley, right foot volley, a tip over. Phil Thompson has got all the room in the world to play the ball to Phil Neal. And the referee blows his whistle, and England are back in the World Cup finals for the first time since 1970. And Kevin Keegan won't mind the bang in the mouth because he's led England out of the wilderness now, and at last we've got something to bite on. England's World Cup hopes look dead and buried in September, but here we are in November, and we've qualified at last.